What's up, everyone? It's your boy, Norrenrad89 here. Today, we are starting our Psycho review series. I had a poll on Twitter, and it was voted that Psycho was going to be my next horror franchise binge, which is pretty amazing because I don't often return to this franchise. I've only seen three of the films in this franchise, so two of them are going to be first-time watches for me. So this is pretty exciting for me. So let's kick this off. And, of course, we're starting with... Alfred Hitchcock's 1960s classic, Psycho. So let's kick this off. At first, we're going to talk about my positives, what I love about this film. Negatives, if I have any negatives, my rating, and then I'm going to send you all home. And of course, we're going to be talking spoilers. It's from 1960. And if you haven't seen it, click stop on this video right now. Get the hell out of here. Go watch this film because it's amazing. And then come back so we can talk about it. So Alfred Hitchcock's 1960s classic, Psycho, stars Janet Lee, John Gavin, and Anthony Perkins. And let's kick this off with the positives. And one major positive right away is, I think, the cast, actors, actresses, all across the board. They do a fabulous job of keeping you enthralled with the film. All the characters, I think they have kind of their own little elements and little tweaks and three-dimensional things about them. The private investigator that goes to investigate Maureen's uh, disappearance is one of my favorites. And he's looking for the $40,000, too. He's like always digging at Norman, you know what I mean, like kind of thing. Norman is such a good job because when you first meet him, Anthony Perkins plays it as such a welcoming, loving, handsome guy. And then as stuff happens, you kind of see the screws unraveling in Norman. So like I said, all the characters in this film are very three-dimensional. John Gavin as Sam Loomis is another fabulous character. So that's one, one major, major positive. Another thing is Alfred Hitchcock's fabulous direction of this story taking you through the film coupled with the amazing score and music in the film it really does take you through it and it's like a roller coaster of emotions throughout this film and it's definitely a film where you can tell in terms of horror and thriller how it laid down the template and really did horror tropes before they were tropes this film really kicked off a lot of things and a lot of people also say Norman Bates is the very first slasher so this film like I said is like most iconically known for being the first film to really do like I said horror tropes and do a lot of things and thrillers that were be known for decades and decades to come Another great thing about the film is just the story the tension the emotions like it just it's always in that film once she decides to take the money, Janet Lee's character, once she decides to take that $40,000, you can feel it looming, that presence, like something's watching over her. Then she comes across the highway patrol officer. Even when she's trading in her car, there's always that tension of like, oh, am I going to get caught? What's going to happen? Like, I'm, I'm kind of nervous. Like, hold on to your seat. And then when you get to the Bates Motel, it's like you can finally breathe. You can relax. And like I said, the first time you meet Norman... It's like he's so handsome, he's so welcoming, you don't really expect what you're going to get later in the film and then stuff just happens. And then once you see him as an audience member and he's peeping on her like a peeping Tom, you're like, oh damn, like she stopped at the wrong place. Like So it's really, like I said, this film is like a roller coaster ride of emotions and the fact that it's black and white, I think it looks really good. Like some of those scenes when she's driving on the road and the rain's just coming down, like a lot of it looks so good. And it just looks iconic the way it is for being that time period and the way it was shot. It's your chef's kiss. You're never going to really match that kind of unique, iconic beauty that you have, that nostalgic, you know, love that you have. It kind of, you know, like I said, nostalgia is a heavy drug. And when it's there, you know, you love that aspect of the film. Also, just the, when, when you get to the third act, it really does a good job of playing into the twist. When that twist happens in the third act and you finally see it happen and you see Norman come around the corner and he's like standing there after uh, Maureen's sister finds the mom in the basement like oh it's just it doesn't even look like Norman he's playing such Anthony Perkins character like his face is so different and that's what I mean this film really did do a lot of horror tropes before they became tropes twists everything all played into a factor in this movie. Now let's get into negatives, and there really is not that many. Like, this is an all-time horror classic. I really do enjoy this film. I just don't return to this franchise that often, so that's why I did put it up on my Twitter poll, and I was really excited that people voted on this one, because like I said, two of these films in this franchise are going to be first-time watches, but for me, negatives, you could definitely tell in this one, some things are dated. The stunt work, the battling, like certain fight scenes with John Gavin and Anthony Perkins and certain stunts with the kills and everything. It's just, it has a certain nostalgic quality to it. And yes, it's old school. You, I can appreciate it for that factor, but it still is dated and looks kind of cheesy. 
also like one main thing is like for me it's not a huge it kind of is a main thing but it's the money and the newspaper thing and how she puts it in the newspaper and it's there and like it's cool because when you see Anthony Perkins cleaning up the body and he's like going through the room the camera's always kind of showing the newspaper like oh we we as an audience member know the forty thousand dollars is there but it it I guess it does come into play because it is an important part of the of the story because the officer comes looking for, I mean, the private investigator, then the officers, everybody kind of gets more curious about it unless she stole the money. So it's like, it, it does play into a factor like in the movie and stuff like, oh, people might have not gone looking for her if it was just her missing. But I just think like, oh, her hiding it right there in the newspaper. I just hate that aspect of the film. I'm like anywhere else. Like I just, I don't like that part i really like every other decision pretty much your character makes but makes in this film besides like i guess stopping at the bates motel because that's the demise of her character but oh yeah that that moment for me is kind of like eh. but everything else in this film is an all-time classic i adore it psycho in my book this 1960s classic is going to get a nine out of ten like i said this is a banger hardcore like classic film and let me know in the comment section what you think of this film. And make sure you stay tuned to the channel and are glued and have that notification bell on so you're notified anytime I post videos and go through me as we or go along with me as we go into the psycho franchise and binging all the films. Where like I said, we're gonna review all of them. Then at the end, we're gonna rank them all against each other and see which one's on top. Will this psycho film crown as the top dog? We're gonna have to find out. Have a safe and happy day, everyone. Peace out.